Welcome to A Story in a Song. This is Deborah Cohen, and today is part of a continuing series on the health benefits of singing. So I hope that you are interested in hearing more about this. Try to find a quiet place where you can be undisturbed for the next 30 minutes, and I will be right back after this message. Hello, this is Deborah Cohen. I'm so glad you found me online. My music is a variety of genres, starting in the 80s as a new wave singer-songwriter, opening up for Joan Jett in Kenmore Square, Boston. From there, I wandered into different genres, exploring my faith, praise music, interfaith music, and pop, rock, indie music, as well as music for TV, film, and movies. So there's all kinds of things to learn listening to my podcast, A Story and a Song. And I hope that you will enjoy the journey with me and that you will share what you hear. Thank you for listening. And again, this is Deborah Cohen, and the holidays are upon us, at least if you're in the USA, possibly where you are. And a lot of times, statistics show that during the holidays, people that are alone suffer from depression. And so I thought this would be a good topic to discuss to encourage people that maybe are dealing with not only depression, but pain. Studies are showing how singing positively affects the physiology of the body, creating healthy changes within and without. So let us begin. And if you're watching on twitch.tv, slash Deborah Cohen Music, the chat box is open, where I will share your comments live. And the article that I'm reading is from ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. So, Marty, he's listening today. Thank you for joining me. And so, if you... uh, If you would like to comment, please make sure that your comments are on topic. And again, this is a .gov site that I'm sharing information from, so hopefully it is honest and truthful. (laughs) Okay, giving singing interventions, which I like that terminology, a singing intervention, because I'm doing all of this research to figure out what kind of a workshop I can create that would help people to get over themselves when they're singing in a church choir or a synagogue or wherever you are singing in a group. And a lot of times I hear people, when I ask them, do you sing? And they're like, oh no, I I can't sing. But you know, unless you don't have any vocal cords, yes, you can sing. You may not have a crystal cathedral voice, but it is something that you can work with and improve with lessons. So it's really that you can't sing. It's that you haven't discovered the right singing coach or teacher. And I'm not promoting myself in that way. I'm just saying from experience, they are out there. So once upon a time when my mother told me that I couldn't sing, I decided to do something about that and took some singing lessons and coaching to get over the fear of public singing. All right. So singing interventions are relatively new in the field of pain. We aimed at PubMed Central to quantify the field and identify the research gaps. Hence, we included non-controlled studies as well as randomized controlled trials. 
We included peer-reviewed singing studies with people with long-term health conditions associated with persistent pain, for example, people with arthritis, cardiovascular disease, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, diabetes, fibromyalgia, and dementia. We also included studies involving cancer patients as cancer is associated with persistent pain. We excluded long-term mental health conditions as a recent systematic review on the effects of singing for mental health can be found in a publication by Williams, Dingle, and Clift, published in 2018. And we excluded studies of professional singers and studies with children and adolescent samples. We also excluded studies that had very brief singing interventions of two weeks or less, had interventions that were not facilitated by professionals with a relevant qualification, i.e. music therapist, musicians, professionals, etc., etc., and did not collect pre- and post-intervention pain data. We did not have large uh, language restrictions. So just to let you to know what the setting was in validating this test to see whether singing helps relieve pain and depression. So the primary outcomes, pain intensity, unpleasantness, pain interference, and depression associated with pain measured by validated questionnaires. And so that's how they found the people to do this testing with. And they based their test framework on Price's pain model published in 1999. Okay, so the pain interference refers to functional limitations. How much does pain impact on physical function, on your work, your recreation, social activities, family roles, activities of daily living, and sleep. And as a side note, depression commonly coexists with chronic pain, can further aggravate the severity of the pain experience as well as depression. Thus, it is vital to assess depression when assessing pain. All right, so the protocol, the methods for this review was registered with the International Prospective Registrar of Systematic Reviews. And again, that's to validate this test so you don't think it's some hokey test. Okay, so ma major database ser searches were performed by the authors with experience of conducting systematic reviews using keywords. And two review authors were screened uh, the, we're screening the eligibility of studies for inclusion in the review based on the inclusion criteria. And I hope that you're finding this interesting and that it piques your interest. So let me scroll in my document here and get to the meat and potatoes. <laughs> Okay, the group singing on pain and intensity. There were two studies recruited for chronic pain patients. Three studies involved old people with Alzheimer's. Two studies recruited cancer survivors. Two studies were with people with Parkinson's and stroke survivors. And uh, so they, they selected a variety of people in this singing intervention. And as I continue, 12 included studies with a total of 311 participants evaluated the effects of group singing on pain intensity and or pain interference. And seven of those studies also reported the effects of singing on depression. Okay, the singing programs were facilitated by music therapists, experienced professional musicians, and the singing intervention length varied between three weeks and one year. So it's giving us in this document a well-rounded picture with details of what kind of singing intervention this was. 
Let me continue to scroll down, and I appreciate you listening to this. And if you want to know more about singing health benefits in general, you can look at my previous episode because this broadcast is every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, the archives being posted on my YouTube channel. The handle for YouTube is at Jewish Rock Music. So, the effects of singing on pain interference were examined in seven quantitative studies with 205 participants. These studies utilized pain questionnaires, which asked the degree of pain and interference in a numerical scale. So again, this is very detailed. This is not what I really wanted to hone in with. So let me find the bottom line here. Okay, and again, I thank you for listening. And maybe I will go to a brief commercial so I can get the right page. Trying to get me a closer look Saw her bathing on her patio Like a voyeur she didn't see My lusting after her Oh, what beauty And we're back. <laughs> and um, this is Deborah Cohen, and I'm still scrolling. This is a longer document than when I first found it. I'm like, whoa, what's this? It must have opened up into something else. So, uh, implications, limited conclusion. Okay, here we go. Finally, based on the research evidence synthesis presented in this review, um, currently there is limited support for the effects of group singing on chronic pain in people with long-term health conditions. Group singing appears to have the potential to reduce pain intensity, pain interference, and depression based on the limited corpus of studies with variable quality. Qualitative data in this review also highlighted that singing programs were enthusiastically received by participants and had positive impacts on the physical, psychological, and social aspects of participants' lives, suggesting a variety of mechanisms. However, additional well-designed studies are needed to investigate whether singing intervention has greater effects than other non-pharmacological interventions on pain experience. Finally, Given the wide-ranging health benefits of group singing, practitioners are encouraged to continue this work and consider me pain measures in evaluation of it. So I think it's exciting that singing will definitely help to reduce pain and depression. So if you, especially during the holidays, are struggling and with pain and or depression, it would be a great thing for you to do to find a group of singers where you can enjoy the music and sing to your heart's content to help yourself to feel better, to chase away the blues. I think this is an amazing discovery. And so I would like you to also consider that meditation groups, some of them are also the teachers are savvy to the benefits of humming for five minutes. So you're sitting there doing yoga or whatever your pose is, and you start humming in the lower register of your voice, mm, as low as you can get. Mm, and if you pay attention to the the sensations within your body, you can feel vibrations happening. And of course, we're all about wavelengths and our, even in health is a certain frequency that encourages the immune system. So let me read on and share with you a little bit about this. 
The power of the human voice never ceases to amaze me. And this is from a website, soundtherapy.com. Not only does it enable us to communicate, to tell great stories, to share our problems and our successes, but the voice also helps boost our immune system. <laughs> I think this is like such great news because I just love to sing. And, you know, I wonder why more people don't love to sing. You know, if you somebody told you you couldn't sing, don't let them determine that you can't sing. I said, as I said in the beginning, you know, unless you don't have your vocal cords, they're wrong. You have God gave each one of us a voice to praise Him, and so no matter what it sounds like, I mean, you can take lessons if you're really self conscious, like I was and still am. You can take lessons to help dis extinguish that fear that keeps you from discovering your special primal voice. We're sounding that. Start with a hum. Hum for five minutes in your lower register. What does that do? Well, okay, so this therapist here is telling a little bit about this, so I'll share it with you because I think it's interesting. Okay, this therapist had been taught to use a singing technique called overtoning which is a softer Western style version of Mongolian kume singing, you know, like you hear the, them go really low. And found that it lulled her into a state of deep relaxation. Uh, she had been meditating for 10 years previously and had not reached such a profound sense of inner peace. And aren't we all looking for peace? And peace starts within. So if you want to have a peaceful world, or at least a peaceful setting around you, it has to begin with you and me. All right. So if you're in turmoil inside, how can you project peace on other people? Although this workshop, which she has, uh, uh, she had attended, focused on the technique rather than the health benefits, she could feel how important the voice was as a tool for health and well-being. Some years later, she developed severe anxiety. Uh -huh. And overtoning was one of the powerful techniques she used to literally sing herself back to health. Years later, she teaches these life-changing techniques professionally and continually witnesses the ability they have to change lives. And that's what I'm sharing this with you, is to help us to become better people and to become healthier. So here's the technique. She uh, is explaining in this document at the Academy of Sound Therapy in a meditation. So if you're in a place where you can meditate seated, preferably plant your feet firmly into the ground. Take a moment to center yourself. Take a breath in through your nostrils. And exhale through the back of your throat twice as long. When you exhale, if you want to feel your abdominal muscles contracting toward your spine, that would be active musculature during your meditation. And again, breath in. Begin to be aware of your surroundings and yourself within them. And focus in on your breath as I just explain to you breath in through your nostrils exhaling through the back of your throat twice as long everybody has their own rhythm depending on how much your lungs can fill up with air close your eyes and mouth and start humming on a low pitch feel the sound resonate within you mm, you're doing this for five minutes mm. Of course, you have to take a breath in between, right? Mm, close your eyes. Mm, do this for five minutes while I'm talking to you. And after five minutes, she says, you have the potential of feeling more relaxed. Mm. I remember doing this meditation on top of Mount Sinai in, in uh, Egypt. Because <laughs> the real Mount Sinai is not in Egypt, but uh, the the tourist Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. And then all of us on top of the mountain 
started doing this mm, on top of Mount Sinai. Can you imagine? Okay, so due to the way we cognitively process sound in the brain in low pitches, which is what I'm telling you about, they tend to relax the nervous system. Go figure. Keeping the sound inside the body gives you a kind of internal massage, which helps you to stay present. It may also help release muscle tension in the neck, shoulders, and upper back. Being mindful of the present moment helps with stress and anxiety. Studies have been shown that the immunoglobulin A, which aka antibody, significantly increased after a short singing session, like five minutes. So apart from being fun, singing is good for your health. I have combined choral and tonal singing with great benefits. And if you would like to know more about professional training and how it will help your your, your singing your immunoglobulin A, aka antibodies, help you to decrease pain, help you to decrease depression. One place you can go online is the Academy of Sound Therapy.com. And of course, those cost money. But if you're also in the Clearwater, Florida area, I would like to start such a group. And I'm really in the formative stages of starting this group for older adults and uh, including senior citizens like me. So I, I was thinking about teaching yoga with humming or, or yoga with singing and helping people primarily that have pain issues. Maybe you're recovering from an injury. So this would be a beginner class. Some people call it reconstructive yoga or people that are interested in finding their primal voice in a meditation class. These are all things that I'm trying to design in a class that would appeal to a variety of different people with the goal being to become healthier, to help to eliminate anxiety or at least decrease it, and to help us to bond, because one of the things that singing also does, group singing, is it releases a hormone, a bonding hormone. So this is why it's important to sing with a group to promote unity. And this would be very, very useful at a congregation where you could present, and you don't, you know, uh, the reading that I just shared with you says you have to be a professional singer for the reasons being you don't want to sing off key. That's going to be like fingernails on a chalkboard to somebody that has a uh, perfect pitch. And that's what bothers me. <laughs> so you want to have a professional that somebody that can at least carry a tune and has a sense of a metronome. Another thing that's a pet peeve of mine as a singer is people that can't keep a beat. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, they're up there leading a congregation and they start out slow and all of a sudden they're up going faster and then down like a roller coaster. And I'm like, oh, boy, what are you doing up there? Go take some classes, will you? So anyway, if you're in the Clearwater, Florida area and uh, you'd like to get this kind of a group going, then you can contact me. Uh, if go to the YouTube channel that I mentioned, the handle is Jewish Rock Music, and look for my live streaming archive videos. Look for this one and put a comment in the YouTube video section, and I will answer you. So, anyway, I would like to close by sharing this new song that I just wrote uh, this morning. <laughs> And it's called Butterfly. And I've been very interested for a long time in butterflies because they always seem to fly. Like when my husband and I lived in Texas, I would be, you know, I call Dallas Concrete City because it's just all 
concrete and bridges and roads and highways and there's not much nature uh, that you know you have to go out in the suburbs to see a lot of trees whereas Atlanta at least when they planned their city they intentionally kept a lot of trees in the design and the architecture thank God but anyway in Dallas you know I'd be sitting at this red light in the hot, hot summer concrete all around me and cars and exhaust fumes and stuff and here comes this butterfly lilting across my windshield and I'm like ah, it's a God thing I consider it a message from God or one of his angels that's encouraging me in the doldrums of life and, and so it, it's interesting because it also happened it happens a lot you know like in in so I have I find butter place a uh, butterflies in places that you wouldn't find them in the middle of the city or uh, yesterday off season in Florida I'm sitting there contemplating about my next song and here comes this orange mo monarch butterfly flitting across the porch screen and I'm like this is not the season for butterflies I don't think it is in Florida in December but I'm like I'm encouraged to write this song. So in the writing of the song, of course, I also have merch. And I'm going to share this video with you. And I hope that you will visit my butterfly merch, which you can primarily find on Amazon.com and Redbubble.com. So I thank you for listening. And I know I talked off the uh, reading chart a little bit but I hope that you enjoyed it and that you will share it with others that love butterflies or that want to learn about finding their primal singing voice. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you again here next Sunday at 11:30 a.m. Eastern Time for a story and a song. Butterflies. I love butterflies. This one is the blue morpho butterfly which is very rare. Seeing this pretty blue butterfly may mean that you will have a wish granted. I wonder if that is true. Let me ask Debra. Butterflies can mean what you believe. Some think that seeing a butterfly means spiritual transformation. I see butterflies fly across my path and they always make me smile. Look at Debra. She is so excited to tell you about her new band merch which is available on Amazon.com and Redbubble.com. Just look for her merch and music online and shop Butterflies. And coming soon, is Deborah's new song called Butterfly. What a beautiful butterfly! Thank you, Deborah.